What's up guys? Beautiful day here in Arkansas. It's about 65 degrees and it is finally time to address the oil leak that I have on this XJ. 111,000 miles. It's all original. I have an oil leak that's getting worse. You can see here on the driveway. That's where I parked overnight, parked overnight, parked overnight. And um, I was at the bank the other day and I could smell the oil burning off the exhaust. So it's getting worse. And I think I have it located. I think it is the oil filter adapter. That seems to be where it's coming from. And that's right here. And you can see that I, uh, you can see all the, um, the oil build up on it right now. You know, it should be clean. Kind of should be a silver color. I went by um, AutoZone and I picked up uh, a pack of Felpro rings, uh, ring kit for this adapter. Let me see if I can get my hand up here and show you what I'm talking about. At the end of my finger, that is where the adapter <clears throat> mounts to the block. And you see that's clean. And for that to be clean, it has to be oil leaking. Right at the end of my finger there. So I think we found our culprit. It's definitely going to be that oil filter adapter. All right, let me get tooled up and we'll get started. So the first thing we have to deal with is this T60 uh, socket combo. And if you've watched the other videos, you'll, you know that this socket combination will not fit. It uh, actually hits the frame rail uh, before it can get seated and there's just no other way to do it. There's no way to do it with this with this socket. I tried to find, um, I had these on hand, uh, but I tried to find a, a small impact socket and then I was going to try to put a serpentine belt tool on it. It's real thin. Um, and use that, but I, I can't find that. I couldn't find the socket, the right socket that I needed. So first thing we gotta do is get this in the vise and uh, punch this, uh, this head out so we can get a wrench on it. Got it punched out. Wasn't that hard, five pound hammer and a nice heavy punch. Pop it right out. Now you take a 12 millimeter wrench and then that fits a T60 perfectly. And I'm using a, the strongest 12 millimeter I have, Pro America, it's USA, made in USA. I've had these tools about 30 years and uh, they've never failed me, so we'll see. And then I have a pipe. Hopefully this, this is going to be too long and I hope it's going to be strong enough. It's actually, uh, think of a closet organizing system. So it's real thin metal, but I have two of them doubled inside of each other. And I've used these as pull bars before and they tend to be pretty strong. And I can get that wrench up in there. I'm gonna try first to go through the top and not cut this bar or this pipe, but I suspect that I end up having to cut this pipe to length and then we go to the bottom. If you guys are reading up on this, or watched any other videos, you'll learn that from the factory they use red Loctite on that uh, torque bolt, and they are a bitch to break loose. And I got the Torx head on it. And I'm really not sure. This wrench where I need it. I 
Well. All right, I'm gonna need two hands to get that pipe on the wrench, if I can get it on there. Stand by. Okay, I have, have the pipe on there. And let's put a little pressure on it, see what happens. And I think it's bending my pop. It's touching the, can't go any further than that. I don't think the pipe bent. sure what was moving something moved surely that wrench is not rounding off Hmm. All right, let me regroup. See if I can find something else to pull with. Yeah, check this out. And this is the best wrench that I have, or I thought. You can see it's starting to give a little... Well, I may have to uh, you know, I don't know why I didn't use that box in before. All right, I got the wrench back on there on the box end where I should have had it to start with. Let's see if that helps. We don't have a new problem. that open side won't go in the into the pipe so right, so I took my vise and and bent this pipe to where it'll go in there now now I probably weakened the pipe the structural integrity of it so I'm not sure if it'll hold up or not if I can keep it going this direction I don't know, maybe it will. We'll see. Felt like something may have turned. I didn't hear it pop though. Turn this around because I think I'm starting to deform the pull bar a little.
No, I don't think anything gave. I think that was my pull bar giving. But the wrench seems to be in a different position. So it is possible. Uh, I need both hands. I'm gonna try to get that wrench in a different position. I shortened my pipe about 12 inches, so uh, maybe 10, 10 to 12 inches. Maybe I have a little more clearance. sure I got it seated right. I think that wrench slid up too far. Let me reset that. Okay, I think I have a good grip on it. Yeah, something's moving, but it doesn't. I think my pipe's bending. I'm not sure. Where that pipe doesn't look bent. All right, it's moving. I think it has to be. If you see the position of that wrench now, it's almost straight up. And before it was, you know, it was out in here. So I think we're moving it. Just slow go. I need something shorter now to get on that wrench. I try to pull this AC line um, kind of forward and get it out of the way and then get something else on it. Well, we actually had it broke loose. So the old bar held up. I reached down in here with my hand and And it was hard to turn, but I gave it everything I had with my hand and it slowly started turning. And then it's getting easier now. So, so it's broke. So now I think, so now let's, get the pan under there and then let me switch to a uh, 12 millimeter ratchet wrench and then we'll get it off Got the ratchet wrench on there. And let's see. Oh, hell. All right, I'm back again. I'm going to have to hold the bottom of it with my finger there to keep it in. Actually, I'm gonna use two hands and get my other hand down there. So I'll, I'll get this off and then, then I'll film again. I already have some oil dripping now. So give me just a minute. All right, I got it off. And man, you just have to keep cranking on it. That, that, those threads are in the engine block quite a ways. And um, while you're away, I pulled the oil filter off and yeah, that just came out. Obviously that's where your oil filter goes. And then this is the part that goes into the block. 
I don't see an oil ring there. Or an oil ring. It is. Yep, I see it. I can zoom in here. You can see it right there. It looks like on the side of the block. Well, I can tell. I can see why it's leaking. That thing feels like plastic. It's still a little pliable, but like I can't, you know, it's still like just a, it's just a soft piece of plastic. It wasn't what it feels like. All right, let's, um, let's get this cleaned up. And uh, I think this centerpiece here needs to pop out. We have some O-rings in there to deal with as well. Try and get this out. Well, that was a little easier than I thought. So there's an O ring there and there. All right, so let me get these parts cleaned up some, and um, we'll get the new kit out and match these O-rings up. All right, I went and cleaned these up best I could. A little bit of degreaser. And I went and cleaned myself up as well and got some gloves on. I normally wear gloves when I'm doing this type work. I just got ahead of myself and didn't this time. You really want to disconnect your battery before you're <laughs> working this close to it with metal, but I'm just being careful here. All right, the uh, part number that I got is ES72962. That's a Felpro kit. I got it at AutoZone, but at the counter, AutoZone said they didn't have the kit. And um, I pulled it up on my phone and, and, and it was showing they had it um, in stock. So I gave the guy the item number, the part number, and then he pulled it up and said, yep, we've got it. So I'm not sure why I have one, two, three, four, five O-rings though, and we need three. Let's see, on the back it says, I have a fuel injector O-ring, oil filter mounting, oil filter adapter, and oil cooler O-ring. And then one, it just says O-ring. So I don't know, maybe these, uh, Maybe this is much a larger kit. I'm not sure why you would do the, maybe it's part of an engine rebuilt kit or I don't know, but it's, I don't know why it includes the oil injector. Hopefully everything matches up. All right, so there's the main old ring. Wind's blowing it away. And that seems to match up fairly well. 
identical. Nice, right, so we're good with that one. Obviously that one goes here. Which is our main oil leak culprit, I think. Now let's get these off. And there's in very good shape. Seems to be anyway. That one looks good as well. I think this heavier one here will be for this one. Yep, those are identical. Oh, losing my stuff, man. This wind is tough today. wind blows here all the time that's got a little twist on it I think it'll be fun and now I think this other one going to be the small one. Okay. Make sure this is clean. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna take a little bit of oil and make sure this is lubed in here before I press these these uh, the centerpiece back in. I got one sill that seats there. Make sure that's nice and clean. And then our other sill will seat there. All right. That should just pop back into place. Seems like we got a nice tight seal. Real tight. Yeah, you gotta remember when you're putting this back on, you're twisting these rings. So I'd make sure you lube them up real good before you pop this back in here. And then when you go back onto the truck, you know, you have a you got to deal with this uh, this little inlet here, where you got a little valve that comes out, an outlet that comes out from the block, and it needs to line up right there. So make sure you line that up when you're putting it back 
make sure that valve comes in here and lines up there. This other one here, got it on there. I'll lube that up as well. I'm probably gonna, I'll lube it up on both sides before I put it back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that started, get this started. Um, I've heard a lot of horror stories as well about getting these started again. Um, my threads are clean. I'm gonna make sure they're clean again. I might lube them up a little uh, before I start. There's also a debate about putting Loctite on here. Man, I just don't know. Um, I don't have any blue Loctite or I'd put that on there. Blue Loctite is, is not as bad. You can break it free. With that red Loctite, I may just, I have some red Loctite. I just don't have blue. A lot of guys, they don't put anything on here. All right, so this thing is not easy to start. Um, so what I'm gonna do, uh, when this is pressed all the way in here, it's, it's really hard to turn because you have the new seals in it. And you have this pushed up against the block and you're trying to turn it. And it's meeting a lot of resistance and then the whole thing's trying to turn. So I'm gonna pop it loose here like that. And then once it's loose, as you can see, it spins freely. So I'm gonna keep it in the loose position, get it started, and then as I get closer to the block, I'll line this up and then pop it in. Or, you know, eventually it'll pop itself in. But uh, that might be a tip for you. See how it goes. Leave that loose. Okay, I got it started and, um, and that tip's gonna work out, so leave that leave that loose until you get it started and actually forget about the wrench um just start it by hand i just kind of let this go held it by the end i use one hand to hold to turn this and then my other hand to hold the um body assembly there and um Start tightening it up a little bit. It's, I'm turning it by hand now. Now I need to line up right there. You see that nipple? It needs to be lined up with that valve or that plumbing that comes out there. All right, so I need both hands to finish that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get it tight uh, with my hand and then uh, and then bring out the ratchet wrench and get into that frustration. Okay, I got it on there. And um, I decided against the Loctite. I didn't put it on there. So I tightened it as tight as I could get with my hand. And then I put the bar back on it and just snugged it up a little with the bar. I think it'll be okay. I read online in some forums and... Uh, there's guys that say they've changed these, you know, three and four years ago and haven't had any leaks or any issues, but. I don't see any leaks. Yes, time will tell. 